So yes, it's this time of the year again, and it's an exciting time. We get to be involved in another uh, ministry, and that is youth ministry, basically, across the world. What a neat thing. I want to remind you, the Operation Christmas Child, of course, starts today. All boxes are due back Sunday, November 15th. Last year, we had a record 232 boxes. This was the fifth highest in Richmond, the ninth highest in the county. Supplies are available here at the church. And if you're watching online, I want to remind you that you, if you would like to participate, please send a donation to the church with a note used for Operation Christmas Child. Carla, Scott, Spencer, Treadway, they would be happy to go and shop and put these together for you. So anybody even here that has, uh, doesn't have the time necessarily to do that, Give the donation to the church in the name of Christian, uh, the shoebox, and they will make sure it's used wisely. So we already have a start over here, and so we challenge as a church, 232 last year, and we always try to break the record. So let's see what happens this next year. All right, I invite you this morning to come with us at a time of praise and worship. We have got an exciting lineup for you, so to speak, in music. I pray, God, that you enjoy our worship time and you give back to the Lord and you in prayer and in song and worship to him. Let's be standing. We are going to sing aloud. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace is ours? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crimson fight? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh through your robes, be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb. Will your souls be ready for the mansion bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Heavenly Father, we come before you to praise you. Lord, to lift these songs up to you. To hear your word proclaimed through song, but also through Jonathan, Lord, that you have laid upon his heart your word. I pray that as it comes forth, God, I pray that it is something that can take root. Lord, we thank you so much for today. We see Alicia sitting here today, God. We thank you for her work that she's doing in Haiti, God. It goes along with what we just watched when the operation uh, for the children of the shoeboxes. 
God, we thank you for that ministry. And I thank you for the opportunity for us as a church to be able to do the numbers we do, God. It's amazing with such a small church. But, God, we are powerful and mighty because we have you. And I thank you for that opportunity. May this worship service be something that you enjoy. I pray as we give back, Lord, we are humbly before you, loving you and praising you, God, and thanking you for the opportunity to serve. That's what it's all about, God, to serve. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise him, praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. See all earth His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, high star angels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In His arms He carries them all day long. Crucified, sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbound and wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent grace. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer, heavenly portals, life with the Savior, reign forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent praise. Praise him, praise him, ever enjoy. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Tell of his excellent grace. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Amen. I told the guys this morning, they are on point playing this music. We miss Miss Tammy, but Tammy's needed to take a break and deal with some other things going on, helping other people. We just are thankful for the opportunity of these guys. Next week, I'd, I'd give you a little, uh, little bit of a, a uh, commercial here. We get to hear Ray with us next week. And he's not going to necessarily play every song, but he's going to bring a mandolin, as I understand it. So he said, we have enough guitars. He's going to bring a mandolin. So there's a commercial. If you want to enjoy some great, great music next week, we're going to have fun, let me tell you. I love Ray. I love everything he does for his congregation. He gives us confidence. Let me tell you, this man comes to practice and sits here, and we ask him, does that sound okay, Ray? And when he gives us his thumbs up, we know that we're at least singing that it doesn't matter how good it sounds. It's just a simple fact that a man who loves God can tell us that we're doing okay. And that's important, so important. You know, I go, found myself in Deuteronomy, as we kind of slow things down. Found myself in Deuteronomy, and this is so relevant to today. As the children of Israel was going over uh, and crossing into the land that God had promised, he reminded them of this. And so I, I, I pulled this out because, and it's just a couple verses, it's just one verse. I pulled this out because it is so obvious today that we need to be reminded of this. It says, when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, and here it is, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Aren't we people that we have to be reminded every day as we walk through this life, we have to be reminded every day that we as Christians have to be something different. It doesn't mean that we do it perfectly every day because I'm here to tell you I'm not. But I will tell you, I'm reminded through the scriptures always that we seek, we go after him in his ways, not what the world has to give. And in saying that, let me sing a song with us today that says, I need a savior.
so many times Will I praise you today I lift up my life Cause you're always the same In my offering To you I bring come to a point in the time of our prayer I've said it over and over and I keep repeating myself but that's okay this is a time where we come together to pray for one another to lift up those who need lifting up remembering us as a group and this song is a song that I just enjoy so much because it says open the eyes of my heart Lord and I don't know about you, but the things of during my week, sometimes, of course, I always pray, but sometimes I don't always open my Bible. And it, it's in that time of prayer and opening up my Bible that it seems like I do open myself to God to hear what he has to say. And so this time of prayer, I pray that you take the time as we pray as a congregation, that you pray and open the eyes, your eyes of your heart to the Lord that loves and gives and supplies. Open the eyes of my heart.
Lord, just thank you so much for that music. That's so wonderful. Amen. Lord, just love seeing all these faces here today and singing these uh, songs and just being here and worshiping you today, Lord. And just thank you for that. And, and just look over each individual soul here and, and uh, just give them a joy and peace of, of knowing you, Lord. And uh, even through the troubles and the, the bad times, we've always got you. And uh, oh, we just... Thank you for this congregation uh, and just uh, just everything uh, that we can just do for you, Lord. And uh, just, of course, always looking across this whole world and and uh, and just keeping an eye out and uh, and just praying and just hoping eyes and hearts will turn to you, Lord. And uh, just like the song says, open the eyes to our heart to you, Lord. And uh, that's what we need more of. And uh, that's all we can ask for. Just continue to look over all those that are working so hard around the world for you, Lord. And even those that are that seem against you, that their hearts will be softened and turned towards you, Lord. And uh, we just thank you for this hour and the message going to be brought to us, Lord. And that that'd be a blessing also. Just thank you so much for you, what you do and uh, for Jesus loving us like he does. The sweetest name we know. Amen. 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 So I'm back to my my uh, calendar. Running down. I'm getting close to finishing. So if I'm wearing you out over my Tim Tebow calendar, I'm sorry. But <laughs> Tim Tebow, I told you my son had a, a calendar that he took off each month. And, and each one has a saying. Like I said, I'm, I'm running it down. Getting pretty close. But today's word that I bring to you is to be passionate I don't know about you, but that music right there makes you pretty passionate. Man alive. You want, we just wanted to keep singing. I don't know if you could tell we didn't want to stop there. But be passionate. Of course, in our Christian lives, we are called to be passionate followers of Christ. Passionate meaning the showing or a cause by strong feelings or a strong belief. A passionate person has a very strong feelings about something or a strong belief in, in something. Expressing their passion is in their behavior. I can talk to you about many people that has passion and, and try to tell you how they uh, show their passion and what they do. But you know me, I always go to knowing Christ is the perfect example. And so from scripture we see Romans 5, 8 says, But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Passion. Jesus, or John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Passion. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For our sake he made himself, this is Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, that in him, that in him, not in us, in him, we might become righteousness of God. Oh, again, passion. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man, which is Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve. Even God himself come to this earth to serve, not to be served, not to be somebody other than just a servant to us, to show us the examples and to give his life as a ransom for many. Passionate, passionate Jesus. So today, I pray that as we come before this table and we pick up that, that cup of, of juice that represents the blood and that loaf that represents his body, I pray today that you pray with passion in your hearts for Jesus. Passion remembering his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension back to the Father, giving us the Holy Spirit. Passion for forgiveness only Jesus can give, and it was given freely. 
compassion and our remembrance around this table and what it all represents for you and I. For in the world, you know, it's all about self-power. It's about taking God out of everything. It's the, the moral decay within that we see that people are, are walking away from the church and walking away from what is an, an, an obvious that God has said, if you follow me, if you follow me. And so I found myself in seven S words in a study by David Bryant. It says, number one, see Christ more in all he is. As you study about him in God's word, which leads to seek Christ more in all, his, in all he is. As you ask for more of him in prayer, which leads to save, Savior. Christ, savor Christ more for all he is as you sing praises to him, which leads to speak of Christ more for all he is as you teach fellow believers which leads to show Christ more for all he is as you emanate emanate him in this world and in deed which leads to serve Christ more for all he is as you minister to others in his name which leads to share Christ more for all that he is as you point others to him and remember the Lord. Those seven S words is why we gather around this table. Because we have a Savior who supplied our freedom. And in that we are to go out and do more. To be passionate. Passionate is what we need to be. Let's raise a hallelujah.
as we come around your table, I pray right now, Lord, that our hearts are before you humbly, thanking you, oh, Jesus, for what you did for us. Jesus, it's unbelievable what you did, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you for everything that points that we need to love you more, and I pray we take action on that. Thank you again for everything that you have done in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, we're joined this morning. Things are going to be a little bit different this morning than usual. Uh, th- this morning, Alicia Rose here is with us. And, and uh, for those of you who may not know, Alicia is one of the missionaries that we serve here at this church. And you got it there. And, uh, and, and Alicia is somebody that, that many of you have supported for, well, frankly, most of her life. Uh, Alicia's grown up in this church, and so many of y'all known her for years and years and years, and so uh, she's joined with us today, she's in for a little bit of time from Haiti, and, and uh, we're just going to have kind of a little question and answer, and just kind of talk about uh, really what God's been doing through her, and in her, and, and all of that uh, during her time in Haiti, but if you don't mind, I want to take a moment and just pray uh, before we begin this conversation, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll get right into it, so uh, Father, we, we Lord just thank you for uh, your love for us, and and we thank you, Lord, that in the storms of life and in uh, every every part of life that we face, God, we don't face it alone, but, Lord, you, you walk with us through it. And we thank you, Lord, that even, even when life is weird and, and different, God, we have something to live for, and, and, and we have someone to live for, and that is you. We have a purpose, and uh, God, help us to live by that purpose every day. And I pray, Lord, that through this conversation uh, with Alicia, uh, God, that you would speak to us and, and, and through this that you would encourage us and, uh, God, God, that you would draw us closer to your heart as, as we try to go out and, and be your hands and feet in this community. And we pray we do this all for your glory. Amen. Now, we, we've been in this series for the past, uh, I guess this is week f- five of this series uh, called Finding Purpose in a Pandemic. And and really the whole point of this series is that we're called to live on mission. We're called to go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus and, and to do all these things for Jesus. And that doesn't stop when the world comes to a halt, right? Like that, We still can continue doing these things and uh, continue serving and continue uh, fulfilling the mission. Uh, in, in fact, this whole idea of living on mission for Christ it was so important to him. It was so important to him that... The last big thing, the last thing quite literally that he ever said to his disciples was basically, hey, y'all need to live on mission. Like, don't, don't stop what you've been doing. Keep going. And so we, we, we read this in, in, in Matthew, two different places. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. I'm going to read it real quick. It says, uh, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when, he saw that they, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to him, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then here's the mission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the very end of the age. And then in Acts 1.8, he he says it a little bit differently. And and it's right before he ascends the Father again. And he says, Hey, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, now for most of us, what that looks like is, is we become uh, missionaries really in, in, in our local area, right? We, we become missionaries in our own Jerusalems, if you will, in our own backyards, in our, in our own cities. Uh, but, but Alicia has taken this. I'm getting to where you can see me over here, Pat. Uh, Alicia has taken this uh, uh, quite literally, this idea of going into all the nations. And Alicia has answered the call to go into Haiti uh, as a full-time missionary. So, so with that in mind, Alicia, just, just to kind of begin, and maybe for those who, who weren't here when that happened, uh, tell us you know, really what went into that idea, that, that, that calling, that decision to, to become a missionary in Haiti. Well, um, for those of you that have known me for quite a long time, um, I've wanted to moved to Haiti since I was 13 years old, um, and a lot of you knew that. Um, I was around that time when I was that age that the earthquake, the major earthquake happened in Haiti, and I remember just seeing all about it on the news, 
and I just felt a stirring in my heart to go there. And I remember very vividly telling my family at that age that I was going to live in Haiti. And they thought I was crazy because <laughs> I was 13. Um, and I don't know, I, all I can say about that, a lot of people have asked me that question, Haitians have asked me that question, why did you want to move here? Mm. Um, all I can say about that is that is the stirring that the Lord put in my heart. Yeah. Um, the Holy Spirit called me to that. Um, there, it makes no sense why a 13-year-old girl from Kentucky would say, yeah, that's, I want to live there. I want to go live in Haiti. Um, but the Lord drew me to that. And I was praying for the nation because I saw the devastation after the earthquake, but that did not sit well enough with me. I knew that the Lord was calling me to more. Um, and then, obviously, I did not move at 13. I moved when I was 23. Um, so I had 10 years of waiting, which I'm not a fan of waiting. <laughs> I don't think very many people are. Um, but that time was necessary. The Lord refined that calling in my heart. He gave me more of a, I guess, a vision to it, a direction to it. Um, so I was able to pick the right organization to go with. I work with an organization called Healing Haiti now. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to get more specific with where I wanted to be. Uh, I work in City Soleil, which is the poorest slum in the Western Hemisphere, the most uh, probably the area in Haiti that's the most in need, um, and I couldn't find anyone else that was working there. I found an organization working there, and now I work in City Soleil full time. So, yeah, the Lord just really orchestrated all of that. Amen. Now, as, as part of the church, and uh, it's it's pretty cool that, that you're able to take. I mean, you grew up in this church, and so you're able to take the mission of the church, and and and, I, and I'm sure that Healing Haiti has a mission, but you're able to still incorporate the mission of of, of this church into what you're doing down there as well. And so uh, let's, let's take a moment and kind of hash that out. And, and, and so, you know, we, we go through our mission statement, so grow and go. The first part of our mission statement, is, as you may know, is to sow. We've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. Uh, and sowing is, is all about telling other people about Jesus, about sharing the message of Jesus. So, so what's that look like and, and for you? How have you been um, spending your time sharing the gospel uh, with, with Haitians? Uh, that's a, a great question. Um, in the nation of Haiti, most people know who Jesus is. Actually, if you look at the statistics as, as far as religious background in Haiti, um, really 90, 80 to 90 percent, I think, are, are, are Christians, would profess Christianity. However, um, it's syncret syncretist there, so they'll mix it with some cultural things. Some, like some people mix it with voodoo, um, or some people will they'll go to church. But we see that here. They go to church. They're not really living out the lifestyle. Um, but because they know who Jesus is, my job's a little bit easier. Um, they know who I'm talking about. Um, for me, what that looks like is just doing life with people um, because you have to get to a certain level with people of trust and friendship to be able to hold them accountable, to be able to point to areas in their life where maybe they're not living like Jesus is, would have lived or would want them to live. Uh, and to call that out, you have to have a level of friendship and trust, especially when you're crossing cultural boundaries. That's very important that I don't just go in there and be like, you're doing that wrong. That's not, that's not okay. That's a sin. That's wrong. I can't go in there and do that until I become friends with them. And that is what it looks like. I have very, very interesting friend groups in Haiti that I love. Um, they're so much fun. They're hilarious. Um, it looks like a lot of meals at my house. It looks like a lot of just doing my day job, I manage a clinic or assist, I, I'm assisting our manager there. Um, I, I work with the clinic staff. We do Bible studies. We uh, talk about Jesus in work. Um, and that's really what it is. It's kind of through my job, yeah. using those opportunities to build relationship and then talk to people about how they can be more like Jesus in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. I'm just running in there and Turn or burn, and kind of nope. that kind of thing just <laughs> would not go build, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, building that relationship that that allows the opportunity. Yeah, there's something for us to learn from that as well. I mean, the, the, you have to have that relationship mm -hmm. uh, for people to, to really care about what you have to say. It's that idea that they have to know you care about them before they'll care about anything you you, you say. Oh, that so. that is so important. That relationship piece is probably been the brunt of my work building those trust relationships those trust place relationships and those friendships yeah. I would say within the last really year and a half so I've been there I've been there two years it took probably a year and a half for me to get to a place with a lot of that staff where they would say she is my friend it took mm -hmm. that long 
because you have to build that trust up. Yeah. And now we're starting the really hard work. So I'm in the I'm in the fun stuff now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the opportunities are growing. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. The next part is 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 uh, the mission is grow, which is becoming more like Jesus. And we know that a lot of times in, in our lives, and if you're a Christian, you grow in adversity. And uh, Alicia, it's no secret that that you've had some some times of adversity down there, whether from the outside or just you know. Life just happens and, and things like that. So, uh, t- tell us now, how have you grown? You've been there, was it two? Two years. Two years now. How in two years? How have you grown uh, in Christ th- throughout your time there in Haiti? Oh, well, I have. I have probably. I don't know if I can say this on stage, but I'm much more humble now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to say that. Um, but you do when you go overseas as a missionary or you work in a job where you're like your job is to teach people about Christ. I mean, yeah. John, as as a preacher, um, the temptation is to say, well, I know the answers. <laughs> you don't. So listen to me because I'm here to teach you. Mm. Um, I had to drop that attitude very quickly. Like I said, that that doesn't work there um, and it shouldn't work there. I've had to learn. Um, sometimes I'm not right. Sometimes they have things to teach me, and I need to learn that. Uh, I've learned a whole different lifestyle. I mean, I live in Haiti. I've had to adapt to a lot of different things. Um, I've learned better thing, better ways to do just daily life tasks, different ways to do daily life tasks. But within that, like I said, I've learned that sometimes the way that I approach serving Jesus maybe isn't the only way or the best way. Mm. Um, and that humility has been very, very important. Um, and I still have to learn that. It's a daily task of humbling myself, remembering maybe I'm not going to get it right, and then giving myself that grace, accepting the grace that Jesus is giving me in those mistakes, and growing from them and doing better. Yeah, that, that humble side, that, that, that's a hard lesson to learn for yeah. sure for all of us. And, and oh, it's a daily thing. Like I said, I have to <laughs> learn it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so you, you mentioned that, that even how you approach Christ uh, is, has changed a little bit. Do you mind to, to share a little bit on that? or? Uh, I have absolutely come to the realization that I need Jesus. Um, I think we would all sit here and say, like, oh, yes, I know that he is my Savior and I need him. But to do what I've been doing for the past few years, um, I would not have had the strength to do this outside of him. Especially these last few months, you know, we have a pandemic in the world. Um, and Haiti has been just involved in its own political issues uh, and I've been alone. I was the only American around for several months, and that was scary, and it was hard, and I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I had to really get my language skills down quickly, um, but I couldn't have gotten through that without Jesus, and I know now that I need him, and it, the Haitians around me have helped me learn that, uh, yeah. the way that they approach Jesus. Uh, they know that they need him. When something good in their life happens, the first thing they do is they thank the Lord. Um, And I think that one of the things that we want to do as a culture in in the American church, we want that to be what our life looks like, but it doesn't always look that way because we have so many other things that we can say, well, I got better because the doctor gave me medicine. Or, well, I got food today because I worked my butt off and I have a job that gave me that money to buy that food. Um, They turn to Jesus first, and I have learned, like I said, through them, I rely on the Lord. I rely on him yeah. much more. We, uh, we have that, that about us that I, I want to use Jesus for the extremes, mm-hmm. and, and I'll, I'll need him so far as, you know, I can't, Jesus, give me a miracle kind of thing, or, or you know, we're at the end of our rope, come in and help me now. On but, a really bad day. Yeah, That's, exactly, yep. yeah. Uh, but, but you're right. I mean, we, we forget that, and I think we heard an amen when he said, I need Jesus. We, we, we forget that sometimes, don't we, that we need him every single moment, every single day. And we sung about that this morning, that we, we need a Savior. It's not just, you know, that, when, when that day where we're getting dunked in the water. It's I, I need a Savior every day of my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you talk about needing that strength, and, and that, that segues in. Of, uh, last week, I don't know if you all remember or not, but we talked about, you know, serving in the Lord. And, and, and uh, the writer of Hebrews tells us that when you serve, serve by the strength that the Lord provides. And so uh, that, that's, that's right along with, with, with what you just said, which leads us into that last, uh, that last part of our mission statement. Uh, it's simply just living the life of Jesus, living like Jesus, continuing that mission of Jesus and, uh, and uh, that ministry of Jesus, especially 
uh, in service. And we know Mike mentioned one of the passages this morning that, that, that Jesus was a servant. He, he did not come here to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We read that last week, Mark 10, uh, verses 44 and 45, I believe. So uh, you've been there in Haiti for two years. You, you've built these relationships. I'm sure a lot of that was just being there and serving, uh, that this, just how can I help you out and things like that. So, so with that idea of go, that idea of serving, what's it look like for you to serve there in Haiti? And uh, what kind of things are you doing to, um, to, to kind of be his hands and feet, to, uh, to continue in that? So I have, um, like I said, a job description there. I, um, I'm the assistant manager of our medical clinic in City Soleil. So I literally assist our staff and our manager there. Um, and that job, I take that within that being a missionary, very literally of serving them. So it's a constant throughout the day. How can I help you? Mm. What do you need um, with my staff? I, I'm there to serve that staff. Um, ultimately, we want our Haitian staff to take ownership of whatever it is we're doing anyway. We don't want it to be Alicia's clinic. We want it to be that Haitian staff's clinic. Mm. Um, so I am there to help them and just assist them throughout their day. Yeah. Um, I also help out in other aspects of Healing Hades ministry. So we have a water delivery system uh, that's really concentrated in City Soleil um, where we're delivering clean water every day to a few different places in the slums, um, which is really a fun thing. I love doing our water truck days. Um, and I, I do. I get to go out with our Haitian staff. We have kind of a staff of guys that works there. They help keep us safe. Um, they also do other tasks like um, one of them is our procurement manager, and then one of them is our, he does public relations for us, is essentially, which is fun. Um, and then they just security guards. They go out and they deliver the water to their own community, and I get to go help them with that, which is really fun. So I get to literally pick the buckets of water up and carry them for uh, the women and children that are around if they would like for me to. Um, I do, like I said, I cook a lot of meals, especially right now. You know, we don't have short-term mission teams coming in. Um, most of our staff is uh, in a pretty good place because they have a job, which is great. Um, but sometimes I just like to do nice things for them, and sometimes it's just hard, like the, the way that Haiti is, it's just hard to know when your next meal will be. And I love to make meals for people if they would like to come eat with me or if they just want something a little extra. So it's really little things. It's that daily life thing as well. Um, yeah, so kind of a hodgepodge of things, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's and we've talked about that as well. I know you you asked that question. What do you need? It's it's just mm -hmm. finding the needs around you and, and meeting those, and uh, and that can, gosh, that can you can have a list of ways that that takes place, and um, especially there in Haiti, I'm sure. But now you talked about this, uh, and you've been there two years, so you were there pre-COVID and then post-COVID. Uh, and I know you had plans to actually be here, uh, was it April, around, around yeah, Easter? Yeah, end of March, early April. Mm -hmm. And so, so you, you were very close to, to getting out before that happened, mm -hmm. but you know, for whatever reason, you, 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 you had to stay there. You know, maybe God had a plan for you to stay there for a little while longer. Uh, so, so you're doing all these things before COVID. COVID hits, and I'm sure like us, everything, for us, everything changed. I mean, we... we the way we approach church and, and everything's still a little bit different. So how were things different for you uh, once the pandemic hit? Well, um, once the pandemic hit, I, I did have a small window of time where I could, I could have left. Um, but through talking with my family, through talking with um, our organization's leadership, I, I chose to go ahead and stay. Um, I just felt like that was what the Lord wanted, wanted me to do at the time. And um, it was a really hard decision, but I'm glad that I did it ultimately. Um, but my service did have to change quickly. Uh, like I said, the airports are shut down. So nobody was coming in. Nobody was getting out. Um, we send short-term mission teams as an organization to do some of those service projects. Like they go and they help deliver the water. Or we partner with different orphanages in the area. So they'll go put on a BBS at these orphanages or they'll deliver... Um, food or whatever it is. Um, I didn't fill those gaps. What was really, really cool, um, our Haitian staff filled those gaps. Our Haitian staff stepped up, went out into their own communities, and they served them, which was amazing. Um, the Lord did some really amazing work in their hearts, and just the growth that happened there. I like 
my goodness, I almost think that's the reason that the Lord wanted me to stay, was just to watch them grow and to watch them serve their own communities. I was so very proud of them. Um, but my role kind of shifted into their support even more than before. So, you know, we have um, one of our guys who does the food distribution, and sometimes he would need me to cover a gap at the guest house to do, like, computer work or to uh, do whatever it is for him. Um, mm -hmm. I would help for the clinics. You know, we were also trying to conserve financially because during a pandemic, you don't have teams coming. You don't have that revenue. We were struggling financially as an organization for a while. Um, I would hop in my car and I would drive around and go buy whatever it was that we needed for the clinics or for the guest house. I would help out with those things. Um, so I really just kind of filled in the gaps and supported that staff. Um, so I, I shifted more from working with our teams and having a daily checklist of this is what I do in our clinic and then I go and I do this with our teams to, okay, well, our service has to continue. We don't have teams to do it. Our staff is filling that gap. What do they need to continue to be successful? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we got one more question, uh, but, but before we get there, uh, is, is there any – any stories or any anything in particular that you want to share that maybe the questions didn't allow for? Uh, I put you on the spot. I didn't oh, give you that one okay. before. But <laughs> um, I don't. I don't really know so much that I have major stories right now. I mean, I'm sure I do, but just this, anything you want to say, <laughs> I guess. But um, uh, I, I really want to thank you guys. I know that. Um, you guys prayed for me so much while I was over there, and I mean, I got messages from you guys. You guys really stepped up and did a lot of financial support for me, um, which I was very, very grateful for as well. Um, but this is still my home church, um, and I, I mean, I come see you guys every time I'm back, so I, I still feel that even when I'm there. So I really want to thank you guys. Um, this was a very challenging last few months. It was hard. Um, I'm very, very thankful. Like I said, the Lord asked me to stay there, and uh uh, kind of when you're at the t tail end of a challenge, you can kind of see what he was doing. I'm, I'm there now. Throughout it, it was hard sometimes to see what, why he wanted to be there during the yeah. season. Um, so I really want to thank you guys for your prayers and the support that you gave me the whole time. Um, it made a difference. Even if I didn't get to tell you individually <laughs> that it made a difference, it made a difference. So thank you guys very much. Amen. One more question, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll wrap up. But, but what are some ways that, that we can pray? You're going back and... October, I think it is. So what are some ways we can pray for you as a church, both now and once you get back? And, and are there other ways we can support you uh, in, in, your, in your ministry there? Um, for prayer, I think I'm asking consistently for people to pray for me to have good wisdom and good discernment in my decision making. Um, I have grown in independence in the country, which is awesome. I mean, I drive there now. Um, next year, I'm looking at potentially moving off of our ministry's campus and into my own home, which means I would live by myself, which is cool, but scary in another country. Um, and I have to remember, though, at the end of the day that I'm ultimately not Haitian, and the Haitians around me do know best. Um, and sometimes I have to remember that what I want to do maybe isn't what God's calling me to do, and I have to remember to shift. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's hard. It's hard to not want to do exactly what you want to do and to sometimes like revert to this idea of relying on others kind of like a kid would and remembering you don't really know what you're doing all the time um but for good good wisdom good judgment good discernment is a huge prayer prayers for safety um mm -hmm. i work in an area that is not very safe um it's in a period of peace right now which is wonderful um we had a really 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 long stretch of violence where i worked um that was hard uh but it is, we're in a time of peace. Just pray for that to continue. Um, what ended up happening, the major gang leaders in the area actually signed a peace treaty with each other, um, and mm -hmm. it looks like it's been legitimate. Um, but just pray for that. Uh, in the peace treaty that they wrote up, they mentioned Jesus a lot and how they wanted to follow him and represent him, um, which is a huge shift, shift if that's true. Um, so I'm just praying it is true. So continue yeah. to pray for that. Um, but yeah, as far as support goes, uh, you guys feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I don't always message back right away because our internet is sketchy in Haiti, but feel free to just message me anytime. Um, I like to hear from people, even if I don't immediately respond, uh, it makes my day. So anytime you want to talk, if you have questions about what I do, if you have questions about where I live, anything like that, I like to tell my stories and talk about what I'm doing. So feel free to reach out. 
and uh, and you can reach uh, Alicia uh, at this email address here. I think I got that right when I typed it out. Uh, but but you you can reach Alicia here if you want to just if you want to reach out to her and just offer some words of encouragement. If you want to just uh, hey how are you doing and and, and ask her how, how can we pray for you during this time. Uh, like, like she said she she can use that. I mean, we all can use that at times that being encouraged and, and things like that. So especially there in Haiti, if you want to reach out to her. Uh, you can do it there. You're also on Facebook. Uh, that, that's that's where I've contacted her most. Yeah, feel so, free to message me on Facebook uh, if we're Facebook friends. Yeah, uh, and if you're not, you can find her on Facebook and and, and start and become friends with her. Mm -hmm. uh, but but definitely, you know, use the email, use Facebook to reach out and and and, uh, and encourage her and, and see how, hey, how can I support you? How can we support you at this time? And and uh, and continue to. I mean, like I said, you all have been part of her life since, you know, she was knee high to a grasshopper. Uh, she's always a little taller than a grasshopper, I guess. But, uh, but, but you all have been a part of her life, a part of, a part of her ministry fed into her up and even up into today. So uh, continue that, and, and I'm sure she could, uh, she could use that encouragement as we go forward. Um, with that said, uh, like I said, you, move, you go back in just a few weeks, about three, the beginning of October, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, so be praying, be on the lookout for that, be praying for when she heads back, the safe trips and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, with that said, though, I, at least if you don't mind, I, I'm just going to pray for you, and uh, this will lead into our uh, invitation song, uh, and, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll close up. So uh, I'll go ahead and pray. Father, we, uh, we thank you, Lord, for, um, Lord, really for, for Alicia's willingness to accept the call. Uh, Lord, I, I know that's not easy. <laughs> I, I know that it's it's hard to to say I'm going to drop everything and I'm just going to I want to follow you. And, and Lord, that's something Alicia's certainly done. And uh, Lord, she she's heard that call and said, God, I, I'm in. And uh, Lord, there's something we can learn from that as well. Uh, Lord, we're, she mentioned being humbled. Lord, we're, we're humbled. I'm humbled by the fact that uh, Lord, she would just say, Okay, uh, let, let's do this. And so, Father, I, I pray that. Uh, I pray for her ministry there. Lord, I pray that you would continue to uplift her and strengthen her in that ministry, that you would, uh, Lord, would continue to put your hand upon her and, and lead her and guide her. Lord, continue to help her grow and to live out this mission, uh, that you may be praised and that you may be glorified through her. And, uh, Father, we, we pray for all of us, that, Lord, as we continue to, uh, to live out this mission, uh, Lord, that every part of our lives would, would be for your glory. Uh, Lord, that you would be glorified, that we would point people to you as Alicia has done there in Haiti, uh, that people may come to know you, may come to know you better. And uh, Lord, may eventually, we, we pray most of all, that they, they would come to know you as their Savior. Uh, Lord, remind us of how we need you daily. Remind us of how we need you even uh, right now. And Lord, help us to rely upon you in that. We pray this in your Son's most wonderful name. Amen. How God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Alicia.